Now down here somewhere, Facebook is meant to have their London HQ and I've been invited in. Well, I think I was expecting a bigger sign, but if you just look through that window just there, you can see a television with Facebook written on it. Sorry, mate, you're not allowed to film. Not allowed to film here? Now, as you just heard, a security guard told me I'm not allowed to film there. And this is one of the reasons why I'm here. I've been invited to Facebook's HQ to have a tour, but actually I think they're doing open source software here. And I think it's a bit of a secret. And I think I'm gonna get into trouble as I try to find out. So I'm gonna go in there to try to take the tour, but I wanna find out what open source software they're writing. Let's see what happens. Okay, so my tour went well, and I have to say that the Facebook uh, facilities there in London are pretty amazing. The room names have themes. Boat in a boat face. <laughs> Putting the months first. Yeah, the months first. Milk before water. That's the worst. The weather. The weather. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the games room, which we are pleased to say is empty, which means the engineers are hard at work. But I really wanted to find out about open source software, but I couldn't find out what I wanted to know. And I was constantly met by closed doors, shut out at every turn. Can you tell me about open source software? <laughs> I understand that you develop open source software. Oh, sorry, I got Maybe these donuts can tell me about open source software. Can I ask you a quick question about open source software at Facebook? Oh, sorry, I really can't do it if I've had my Facebook before. Okay, I actually have to admit, I was actually specifically invited there to talk about open source software at Facebook. I thought it'd be a really interesting subject to see what a big corporation, one that is so well known, is actually doing in the open source community. So let's roll the interviews that I recorded. Okay, well, thank you for inviting me here today. It's a pleasure to speak to you. Maybe you just quickly introduce yourselves and tell me a bit about what projects you work on. Yeah, amazing. Great to have you here. Uh, I'm Pascal. I work on a team called UI Tools, and we build a bunch of internal tools. The biggest one of that is Flipper, which is also an, uh, available in open source. It's an extensible mobile debugging platform. Uh, hi, I'm Mihaela. Uh, my uh, extended team is called Native UI Frameworks. I specifically work on Litho, which is an open source Android UI library. Okay, that's great. Now, as a general question, what's Facebook's kind of stance on, on open source software? We've got two projects already. I know there's a third one we can talk about. That's a pretty good number for a big corporation. Is it encouraged? Is it, is it, a, is it something that they're into? Yeah, absolutely. It's like whenever there is an internal project announced, so you see a post somewhere, like one of the first comments will always be like, oh, is this already open source? And if not, like, when will it be? So it's really ingrained in, into the culture here and very much encouraged. It's almost like a default, but before we open source anything, we always check, like, how much is this actually used internally? Are we sure we're going to stick with this kind of thing? Or is this more in a prototyping phase where we're actually still trying to figure out how much value this provides if we want to stick with this. Because what we try to avoid is just put something out there in the open and then abandon it because we don't actually use it anymore so internally. So stagnant stagnation doesn't help at all with the... Yeah, exactly. We always want to foster a community around the open source projects and yeah, we, we can't do this if we don't derive any value from it internally anymore. Well, that's, that's a good philosophy. I like that. That's very good. So tell, yeah, tell me then a bit about this, your, the project that you're involved in. Then. Yeah, so as I said, Flipper is an extensible mobile debugging platform. And what this really means is it's a tool. It runs on your desktop and you can connect this to mobile applications. So if you have like Facebook running on a phone and you want to debug this and want to figure out why something is rendered on screen, you can connect it to it. And then you can see, for instance, the layout tree. You can see what network requests were made. Internally, we also have plugins that allow you to inspect GraphQL, if you've heard this before. It's like our data transfer protocol and can look into more of the request details there. It also allows you, and that's super important for us internally, when you have a layout tree, to look at particular attributes and views that are on your screen and edit them directly. So you can, for instance, like tweak the padding a bit and you can do this instantaneously and don't have to go through the entire rebuilding cycle and installing the application again on your device. And do you find that people are using it for other projects, or, you know, the open source project, are they using it on the out? Yeah, yeah, we, we've seen this. So uh, I know that Twitter, for instance, is one of the adopters that we have. They even have internal plugins that they've developed to look into their, like, app-specific internals. And yeah, this is really cool to see. Oh, that's great. Uh, and what, what language is it written in? What's the kind of the, the environment for that? 
So yeah, um, the, the main application is an electron-based one, so that means it's written in JavaScript and we use Flow for, for type checking, but uh, there are SDKs for Android and iOS as well, those are then written in uh, Java and Objective-C respectively, and we have React Native integrations too. There's a bit of a C++ core, so this also means we have a lot of um, different kind of experts for the areas in our team then, so. Uh, can I also add that um, after we had Flipper, uh, it's massively improved the experience of the Litho users, which is the framework that I okay. work on. Um, I think it was built with Litho in mind from the beginning, because we initially had Stetho, well, which was um, a browser-based um, layout inspector tool, um, but it wasn't that well integrated with Litho, so we just made the experience of using Litho so much better after we, had, uh, we, we added Flipper. Excellent. And again, the, it, you're finding Flipper being used on the, uh, sorry, Litho being used o by other people on the internet? Um, yeah, we've had um, uh, really uh, awesome contributions from the open source community. Um, some fo folks at YouTube are using it now. And actually, last year, one of the biggest improvements that we made to the framework was an external contribution. And it's, it's made the framework so much better. Excellent. And that's the essence of community development, I suppose, in that sense. Yeah, exactly. When external people are using it and they're adding into it. And then, and what kind of licenses are these, uh, these under, these frameworks? Uh, Litho is now under Apache 2 and Flipper is under MIT, I think. Well, that is a brilliant summary of what, of what you're doing on your projects. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Okay, now it's my pleasure to speak to Dino. Dino, thanks for speaking to me today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So tell me a bit about the project that you work on. Yes, I work on a project called Infer. Infer is an automatic tool that helps uh, engineers to write better code. And uh, in practice, it finds analyzed code and it finds uh, possible errors. And so we can fix those errors before we ship uh, our apps to our users. Oh, wow. Now that is an important tool. What, what languages does that support? I uh, support uh, Java, I support C, C++, ObjectDC. So we can uh, uh, actually analyze uh, all sorts of uh, uh, software that we have uh, inside Facebook. And what kind of uh, errors does it, does it check for? Uh, it checks uh, different kind of errors, like, uh, uh, for example, null point exceptions, uh, concurrency errors like uh, data race, uh, deadlocks, or uh, uh, resource leaks, uh, all sorts of uh, painful um, errors that can make an app crash or uh, perform badly. So, and also there's the security implications of that as yes, well. Yes, there are security well. implications, for example, like uh, null pointer exceptions sometimes, so, or buffer overflow can actually uh, imply certain kind of uh, security bugs. So uh, it is uh, better, of course, like to, to uh, get rid of those uh, as soon as possible. And, and give me an idea of how it works. It would take the source code and, and analyze it, or it would compile and analyze the, the object files. How, how does it work? Yes, so uh, a bit of, uh, of the two. So it takes the source code, and then it compiles down to a special uh, internal uh, intermediate language that we have. And then this intermediate language is uh, analyzed by the back end of the tool uh, with sp special kind of analysis. And then uh, the, the results are um, Given back to the user, pointing uh, to the source code, to the original source code. Fantastic! That sounds like a, I wish I had one of those when I was doing software engineering, many, 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 many moons ago. <laughs> so uh, again, open source. It is. It is open source. We open sourced it uh, three years ago, and uh, it is used by many developers, many companies uh, like Uber, uh, Spotify, uh, Amazon. And um, it is also used uh, uh, by the academic community because actually this, uh, uh, this tool goes back to, um, to academic research. There is a, a very uh, uh, important uh, research in the, in, the, in the field of programming language that works on detecting the, this kind of bugs uh, at uh, compile time. And uh, so many people uh, in this field, they use Infer also for doing their own research and uh, so to do experiment and uh, to uh, contribute to the tool and uh, with uh, new uh, things they do in, the, in their research. Fantastic. Well, that is absolutely brilliant. I'm going to have to check that out and uh, see with how well it works. Yes, yes. Well, that's really good. Thank you very much for your time Thank today. Thank you. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I must say the engineers that I met are really pretty special and they certainly know their stuff. For example, Dino there actually has a PhD. He also is a professor at uh, Queen Mary's University of London and actually he invented himself a lot of the techniques 
that are used inside of that Infer project, which as I said, is uh, open source. In fact, do check out all of those open source projects that were mentioned, and I'll leave links to them in the description below. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Please ring that bell notification icon, and uh, well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.